Good news, ladies and gentlemen, especially for those of you that are not fans of the CV class. We are getting a whole host of changes to the way that CVs work and interact with surface ships. So what's happening is that, if you recall, a few months ago, Wargaming announced some conceptual ideas around changes pertaining CVs and the way that they interact with, well, that they and their planes, I should say, interact with surface ships. We got that dev blog, it sat for a very long time, and then I think literally the last day of February, which is the month they promised us an update on said conceptual ideas, they said they were going forward with testing these ideas. And now, lo and behold, here in April, the middle of April, we finally have a more detailed look at what they will be testing here in the future. And saying these are big changes is an understatement. I would consider this the second CV rework, or the CV re rework, if you will. And yeah, it, they are truly some huge and tremendous changes to CVs, and some are excellent ideas in my opinion some are not so great especially considering the variety of cvs that we have in game so we will be going through this article in today's video if you wish to check it out for yourself which i do highly encourage i suggest you check out the link in the description down below you can read along as i read aloud i will be throwing up any relevant images artwork graphs or spreadsheets if they are included in the article but again, if you want to check it out, check out the link down below. If you do find this video informational, helpful, or entertaining, please make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. It helps out tremendously so, of course, on the YouTube side of things. So, let's go ahead and get into this article. The title of the article is, Changes to Aircraft Carriers and AA. Closed test. So this is a actual test now, not just sharing of ideas anymore. So the article says, Greeting Captains! Back in December we announced our plans to implement significant changes to aircraft carriers. We hope you're ready for more news because we have a boatload of info to share. As a reminder, we'll be conducting our first major closed test on April 16th to try out these updates, so certain details can and will change as we move through the testing process, so two days from now. With that out of the way, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Changes to aircraft carriers. First, some key details. As announced previously, the core of the new concept boils down to significantly changing the way the aircraft carriers, I'm sorry, that carry aircraft operate while traveling and attacking. Traveling. Similar to the current implementation, traveling, also known as high altitude now, is the state that aircraft will spend the most time in as they traverse the map. What will be different? While traveling, aircraft will not spot enemy ships, will not be targetable by regular AA fire, will not deplete their engine boost, can be spotted by enemy ships, cannot attack enemy ships or drop ordnance in any way. So for the AA fire, they can be attacked by DFAA. So if you use your DFAA consumable, you can shoot at those planes that are at the high altitude level. This means that aircraft carriers must rely on spotting from teammates in order to identify targets. Carrier squadrons will also have access to a new consumable called Active Reconnaissance. While active, this consumable will provide an indicator if slash when aircraft are within the range of enemy AA, similar in appearance to the spotted indicator, and will also show if an enemy has used their updated priority sector, see details further down, Note that this consumable will not provide actual spotting or minimap indicators and will not work if the enemy ship has its AA turned off. Alright, so we're going to go through each section. I should have mentioned this you know, a little bit ago. We're going through each section. I'm going to give you guys my two cents on it, then we'll move on to the next section. So, these changes so far. What has changed is that the planes will now not spot enemy ships whatsoever when they are traveling used to they could still spot i believe in a smaller radius but i believe it was also just for themselves they could not spot for the rest of the team until they went into the attacking phase but now they cannot spot whatsoever when they are traveling i think that's a little bit rough I believe it would be fine to keep spotting in this phase limited to CV spotting for themselves 
or perhaps spotting for themselves plus mini-map spotting. I think, again, not being able to see anything whatsoever is a little bit too far, because how are they supposed to find ships now? Well, obviously you might say they'll go into the attacking phase. This is true, but, I mean, so what? They're going to just blunder around for 15 minutes or 5 minutes trying to find someone to spot? If, let's say, the DD dies on a flank like does happen so many times nowadays, I'm just not exactly sure if that is a wise idea or if that will even stay through and through this test. Again, this is all in testing and it can and probably will change quite a bit before it makes it to the live server. But yeah, I'm not too keen on that one. Everything else I think is pretty good so far. I think being able to have a limited engine boost while you are at this higher altitude and can literally do, well, nothing but travel does make sense. So, again, everything else I'm cool with, but that, don't know how I feel about that, leaning towards it's a little bit too much at this moment. Alright, next section is the attack runs. We've talked about traveling, but how do you actually interact with enemy ships now? Similar to the current implementation, aircraft carriers must start an attack run. While conducting an attack run, aircraft will spot enemy ships, become targetable by AA fire, take significantly reduced damage from AA for the first few seconds of the attack run, which is how it works now, will de deplete their engine boost as usual, and can attack enemy ships. Compared to current implementation, there are some additional key differences. Preparation time for attack runs has been increased to prevent them from simply starting an attack run right above the ship and avoiding most of their AA. Planes will, however, not have reduced maneuverability during the attack preparation time, which will make it a bit easier for the carrier to strike when there are no allies nearby to spot the target. Additionally, attack runs will only consist of one attacking flight, while the rest of the squadron will remain at high altitude and will not receive AA fire, any planes that are destroyed in the attack run will not be replaced, meaning that shooting down planes will directly reduce the damage dealt by the attack. If the entire attack flight is destroyed, the run is aborted. Okay, so I guess going kind of backwards here. The planes in the attacking run not being replaced by the planes from the rest of the flight, I think, is something that's long overdue from being implemented. That is one of the chief complaints about AA versus planes right now, is that you can wipe out an entire squadron, but if you're... CV opponent is someone that has a large flight. They can simply replace most of that squadron, I believe, up until like the last few seconds of the attack run, right? So that right there is a big, big plus from me. Um, the other question I have about this is that this attack run, do the planes just chill at high altitude and then you click left mouse and then you engage the attack run, or can you select, I want to travel at high altitude, or I want to travel at my attacking height? That's a big question, right? So can you swap back and forth between these two altitudes, or are you stuck at traveling altitude, and then you just hit the attack run when there's a target spotted, or you think there's a target nearby? So that is a question I like to have answered. Um, it sounds like right now the way the gameplay loop is going to function is that the surface ships have to spot for the CV. The CV flies over to where the surface ship is spotted and then they engage the attack run from their high altitude. They come down with one squadron, engage the target, and be it all the planes are shot down or none of the planes are shot down, you know, either the attack goes through or the attack gets aborted if all your planes get shot down. I'd like some clarification on that, and hopefully in the future some, like, gameplay clips, or, of course, it's going to come to the P2 server before it gets to the game, but I think that's probably several updates away before we see that happening. So, yeah, okay, cool. Um, increased maneuverability during the attack run, yeah, if you can't spot, obviously I think that is needed, because you can't line up your runs beforehand that well, so I believe that's fair. Uh, again, everything else seems to be pretty much as it was beforehand, so yeah, not much more to discuss there from what I see. Alright, now the secondaries. While not controlling aircraft, carriers will now be able to manually control their secondary battery. 
In the case of carriers with mixed secondary armaments, they will control the largest caliber guns. They'll become the main caliber ones. While operating aircraft, all guns will be aimed and fired automatically as usual. It is so ironic that carriers, of all things, get manually controlled secondaries before any other class in the game. So, of course... Um, this is an absolutely amazing buff to Graf Zeppelin, and I believe uh, some of the higher tier Japanese carriers have like three Harugumo turrets on them, and what the Nakamov has has I think literally like five or six Smolensk guns, um, sorry Smolensk turrets attached to it too. So yeah, that'll be interesting, and it might encourage CVs to play a little bit closer. Uh, it's going to make rushing CVs and destroyers a hell of a lot more difficult. So yeah, I think that's cool. Um, I would like that to be a thing on other ships. You know, maybe take a or create another secondary skill where you can literally manually control your secondary guns. I think that's pretty neat. Now, surface ships are also getting some changes. So, those are the key changes for how aircraft carriers will operate. What about surface ships? We also have some substantial changes coming to the way that surface ships interact with aircraft through their anti-air batteries. First up, DFAA. We mentioned earlier that aircraft in travel mode will be untargetable by AA. Well, here's the exception. While DFAA is active, your AA batteries will be able to target enemy planes even when they're flying over you at high altitude. However, while active, planes at high altitude, which are under fire, will be able to spot you in return. With these changes, we're also renaming the consumable to Barrage Fire, so no more DFAA. I'm still going call it, to call it DFAA for probably like the next two years, but okay. So, I mean, that makes sense if you're using DFAA to shoot down aircraft above you. It's only fair that they can spot you while you are doing that. Uh, the Giga Chad strat will probably be to just turn your AA off until the planes dive down. Unless you're like a kid or a Minotaur or a Wooster that can, you know, melt the entire flight while it's up there. So, fair trade in my mind. So here's where what's really, really interesting is the way that they're changing Priority Sector. So, Priority Sector is receiving some major changes that will be renamed to Active Concealment. Similar to the current priority sector, active concealment can be activated with the press of a button and takes effect within your AA range. When activated, it will instantly deal a certain percentage of the squadron's health and damage when it enters the AA fire. Additionally, active concealment will cause enemy aircraft within range to become unable to spot, making aircraft reliant on teammate spotting. The effect will also negate the damage reduction that planes receive in the first seconds of their attack run. However, it is important to note that this should be used preemptively and not reactively, as the effect will only trigger on enemy planes if they have entered your AA while the effect is active. If the planes are already in the AA zone and the effect, and the effect is activated, it will not block their ability to spot and will not negate the AA damage reduction and will not apply the percentage damage to the squadron. Good timing will be critical to effectively use this ability. So now if you use Priority Sector at the right time, you can literally blind the enemy planes and you will negate their few seconds of uh, reduced damage, which is um, kind of nuts. Now, again, the thing is you have to trigger them, trigger it right before they enter your AA zone. So, like, literally if your AA range is, I don't know, 6 kilometers, you need to pop it at, like, 6.1 kilometers. Then they won't be able to see you. They'll be getting shredded by the AA damage, so that is th th that is crazy if you time that right. You can literally blind the planes by setting your priority sector, which is an unlimited thing. You know, you don't have so many charges of it. So they seemed just on a highway now to absolutely slaughter CV spotting, it seems. So, yeah, this is what the second big nerf to... Uh, CV spotting so far, so they seem to have gotten the hint from the community. Passive increase to AA. We're not done just yet. All surface ships will receive a new passive way to deal with enemy planes targeting you while there are planes in your AA zone. Passive increase is a meter that will charge up while your AA is shooting enemy aircraft. Your progress is not time limited, meaning that even if your AA does not shoot down enemy aircraft for a certain period of time, progress will stay the same and not decay. But once your progress reaches 100%, the passive increase will be automatically activated and you will receive the following perks for a period of time. 
One, a bonus to AA damage. Two, a bonus to the damage caused by active concealment, priority sector. Three, a reduction in active concealment cooldown. So again, the six seconds after you pop priority sector, you get a buff to that. Additionally, this passive increase will not reset if you disabled your AA. Two will last for several minutes. We decided to go with an automatic activation of this feature due to the extended length of the action time as this is as this is supposed to serve as a defensive tool. The effects of this passive mechanic should strongly disincentivize aircraft carriers from relentlessly focusing a single target. We've already introduced several other active changes for players and we wanted to avoid a scenario where, for example, all players in an attack path activate this simultaneously and almost instantly destroy the attacking flight as it is supposed to serve only to disincentivize constant attacks from the CV over a longer period of time, not as a general deterrent. That's all for now. We hope you're as excited as we are to see these changes entering testing and look forward to updating you as we continue to work on and test the concept. So, um, yeah, dang, um, that's a lot, a lot of the chief complaints around CVs that they're attempting to address here. I mean, this passive increase to AA, like they say, that's, that is going to give the singled out ship a hell of a better chance to withstand those constant uh, CV attacks, which, um, yeah. So, all of this sounds pretty good. It sounds like they are genuinely trying to do something to improve surface ships and CVs, their interaction. But again, a lot of this could simply be done by mini map spotting. This is adding in a whole nother layer of mechanics on top of the already existing CV mechanics. Now, yes, a lot of those existing CV mechanics are going to be replaced by these mechanics, but you still have other mechanics that still will be sticking around afterwards. But Part of me is thinking, too, like, this is kind of convoluted. And it sounds like you're going to make CVs more complicated to play. Which, in turn, is going to raise the skill floor. And how much longer are we going to go before we're back at square one, where with RTS CVs, the skill floor is so high, you had to be a god in order to do well in CVs. And if you were a god in CVs, you were, well... A god in CVs, right? So, I don't know. Now, this is, of course, all in testing. Like I said, I would be shocked if this made it through without any changes whatsoever. There's going to be plenty of changes that are going to, well, come to these testing uh, mechanics. So, I, I would not take this as set in stone by any stretch of the imagination. We will see how they change as they go through this. And like they said, they will be keeping us updated. So, uh, but overall though, I am glad they are doing something and not just letting CV stay as is. Uh, let me know in the comments down below, especially if you are a CV main. What do you think of these changes? Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? What do you like? What do you dislike? What would you change? What would you keep the same? Let me know all that good stuff in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Tuesday, a wonderful rest of your week. And again... Hope to catch you guys in the next one.